Welcome everyone to episode 46 of the Looks Like a Movie podcast. My name is Kevin. I'm here with Doug Owen and our guest today, Josh, who's on Twitter at 10 More Skies and has writing in various places online, which will be linked in the episode description. Today we're going to be talking about Stan Brockage. Uh, but first, welcome to the podcast, Josh. If there's anything else you want to include in there, feel free. No, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, uh, esteemed uh, colleagues. <laughs> of course. Um, so do you do we want to just jump into the Stan Brockage stuff then? I was going to suggest if you, I'm gonna be the resident dumb guy this episode that doesn't know anything. <laughs> so I was gonna suggest if you guys wanna just like before we talk about any specific works, if you guys just want to give a little background, a little insight, because I know very little about him and I imagine some people listening know very little as well. I don't know how we wanted to tackle this. <laughs> <laughs> um because it's like it is hard because he has such a large body of work it's like we can't do a traditional like we did an m night episode earlier this year that yeah. i think uh was pretty successful um but we can't do this like we did that where because we just talked about m night's like 15 films like individually and we went all like all the way up uh and here it's like you know there's like like two a collection of like 250 works over like his whole life and it, they're all yeah i mean they're all pretty different it's so i don't know how we wanted to do this uh i do have them written down in in the order that they came out i don't know if that's the order that you guys want to talk about them in or the specific so, movies that we're i mean going over at least <laughs> it's like a it's a weird way to do it i think it's good that we've uh you saw those kevin but i feel like just talking about it in a broader sense for most of it is probably the way to go with that but you if you want to mention the the films that you watched kevin sure uh, just for the yeah. audience i guess <laughs> I like how we're making this about me <laughs> like well, i think, I think it's a, i think it's a good you're like a good gateway sure yeah uh for the viewer um, kevin's guide to brackage yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly well i did also watch a few additional ones i guess that were not on the list that sure. you guys sent but the ones that were required <laughs> watching, I guess, for this episode uh, were Anticipation of the Night, Window Water Baby Moving, Mothlight, Dog Star Man, and then the 18 shorts in the Persian series. So those are the ones that I watched for the episode. Which other ones did you watch? I watched Night Music and I watched I Myth a few times <laughs> because you guys, <laughs> you guys forced me to watch it. Um, <laughs> Clockwork Orange, Kevin, and we just played yeah. Night. Uh, we just played I Myth for like a minute straight, so <laughs> yeah. it was like fifty times. Um, yeah, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen that more times than any movie ever. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but those are the ones that I watched for the episode. So, so you're saying instead of talking about anything specifically, we should just. I mean, we can definitely talk going specifics, <laughs> but I think there's a lot of a lot of the discussion. I feel like is like a a broad discussion about like his work and just him sure yeah. you wanna get us, do you want to get us started then Owen I feel like this is kind of um I mean I have lots to say I don't know I don't know how, it's a weird thing to start I think it's an interesting episode to do because it is like Doug said it's so different from just traditional like the way we would go about it because you know we'd go about it we go by plot by plot or we'd we do something it's we, we kind of focus more narratively because it's easier to talk about narrative stuff because you're really talking about words. Yeah. Um, I, there was, I had a couple of questions that I kind of wanted to ask you guys because um, it just comes up in discussions because some of my, you know, I do some experimental work and just in class and stuff and we have, we have discussions. And I think there was an interesting uh, thing brought up last week because I, I presented a hand painted film and I didn't, it was a kind of a work in progress thing that I'm not done with, but um, there's often, uh, questions about like two big questions that come up are like every time you uh have like an, an experimental film if there's no sound it's always uh you know what wh why sound no sound or would you what would you do if there's a soundtrack and brockage always normally will not have sound and i think there's an interesting thing where it's like the sound is is quite interesting i watched a documentary where there was clips of him interviewing he talks about um no sound and how he thinks they're like his theory is like without the sound you you see you know clearly more clearly with without sound which i think is quite interesting um and i, I just kind of wanted to ask you guys about 
uh, your experience with that? Because I know a lot of people do will listen to music with some of the Brockage stuff. And some people just, because I was talking to someone else, because uh, I sent them one of them, um, and they, they love Brockage, and they, they talk about how they have to be in complete silence when they're watching it. Yeah. I just kind of want to ask you guys your kind of thoughts <laughs> on the sound aspect of that. When I was first kind of um, discovering uh, his work, um, and I was like, or like reading kind of like like amateur analysis and like a more like like older uh, analysis as it was coming out of it. Um, I saw a couple. I saw like a couple of times this idea of him creating visual music come up, um, and I think that's like a really really apt description for 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 some of his stuff. And I think that kind of like when we talk about like the intentionality behind him, like 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 uh like leaving a lot of the stuff silent and not creating a soundscape yeah. with it it is like it's like oh it's like it is is music for the eyes you know it's 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 deaf music i think i think that's uh, and i think that's a, a an interesting way to think about some of this stuff yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i was just gonna say i mean it's a good thing you brought this up because this is the one thing that i like after watching all these the only question i wrote down <laughs> was about that um because i wasn't sure if i should because like some of them i was like do i watch these with no music and then the other one i was like and i didn't i even asked in our discord i was like asking people i was like what music should i listen to during dog star man and then nobody answered me so i was like okay gotta, <laughs> like i gotta go to i got i i scavenged reddit instead and no. i just like i just listened to like the top um suggestion on reddit which uh i don't even remember what it was called <laughs> it was like something about it was it was by grouper I think. Oh, I yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. yeah. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't listen to music, so I sound like even more of an idiot because it's like two <laughs> things that I don't know anything about combining into one. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I thought that was pretty good. I, but then anticipation of the night, I just kind of listened to quietly. I wasn't sure. I didn't really ask you guys ahead of time if I should be a purist or if you guys have like any, <laughs> any thoughts about how to approach that. So, no, I mean, it's, I think, I think that the biggest problem you could have, uh, when approaching this stuff is, uh, like over intellectualizing it. Um, sure. uh, you know, I think that, I think that this is really, a lot of it really is about feeling. And I think that when you do listen to music, like I listened, so I watched Dog Star Man silently, um, but I listened to, and that was a very intense experience, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I did listen to, uh, when I watched Anticipation of the Night like uh, like last year i think um i i listened to music uh not, not because i was like oh like um i was like going into it being like i'm gonna listen to music but because i think like the top letterbox review was like i listened to this while listening to this i think it was either brian eno or philip glass album and and they were like highly recommend and i did that and i was like oh, this is a really cool experience <laughs> um, uh so it's like i it's i don't think it's a, it, we talk about like intention but i don't think it's like a it's you know it's not just about feeling and it changes yeah. the feeling a little bit. Uh, but I don't yeah. know. Like I know that Josh, you um you listen to music when you revisit a lot of the stuff, right? Uh I I definitely used to. Like when I was first getting into Brackage, like it was like a year and a half ago, maybe like two years ago. I listened to like a lot of music. Dog Star Man was the first one I saw. And it's like Bony Bear. <laughs> yeah. Um but then recently I got put on listening to projection sounds and I have like this YouTube video, which is like eight millimeter projection sound for like one hour and like anything <laughs> silent now, like brackage or otherwise, I'll just like listen to projection sounds on loop. That's smart. Cause there is a different, you know, experience cause just being in school recently and just like watching things projected, there's a different vibe. I, there's a, they showed somebody, it wasn't, a, it was an example from a previous class, but they had a, a project and it was, digitized but the audio digitized like they used the sounds of the projection and there was it was a piece that it focused on like metal and the projection sounds like went very well with the metal thing and i think there's there's something very interesting about like just the sound of the projector and then uh just even running like handmade stuff there's just a very interesting sound that that makes um so that yeah that's really cool i but i think uh the with the sounds and I guess music with Brockage, I think I some of them I don't like to do it, but some of them like I think for the longer pieces sometimes I'll do it. But I think there's a the experience with these films are very individual. So I think when you bring sometimes your own music or certain musics, I think it can enhance that individual experience. 
um, because you often are bringing out like your own emotions from the piece and bringing in something like that can't do that but sometimes i just like to uh you know just sit in silence and kind of embrace the uh the images there (laughs) yeah i i I never considered like like (laughs) pulling up like projection sounds on youtube yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's really interesting because like i feel like even um heard it at the time Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is not well, like, like digitized files. Like this is what people were hearing, mm-hmm. like in the yeah. '60s. So I was like, this feels like even more, like of the spirit of brackage, maybe even silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, even like I think um, when I first got into uh, like the first brackage I saw was Mothlight, and I watched it on YouTube, and this was a long time ago. And uh, I think like the top comment on whatever YouTube version I saw it was like, actually, um, it's supposed to be you're supposed to hear the projection sounds because it sounds like the mo- like the 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 well, moth yeah, wings that flapping. That would sound and... that would sound insane. With the the yeah. crunches of the the moths would sound like crazy. Well, like, they didn't project that... the version. No, with, I, like, no the... I know, but I'm just, I'm just I'm just thinking about that. If you if you had a version of that, because I I know how paint sounds and like that, that yeah. that's, it's all crinkles and stuff like that. That would sound insane of like little. I know that's not how it, but that would sound really cool. I'm just that's where my mind goes. Yeah, that would sound crazy. Uh, what was the, what was your your follow up question, Owen? You said there was two questions. Oh, from school. Well, yeah. um, so it was kind of on what Doug was saying with night music. But so when I when I kind of showed this piece that I was working on, it's always you know sound, but the it's an interesting thing that my professor brought up was um does it have a title and the importance of titles on experimental cinema because you're especially when you're working with something that is you know there's no words and it's all visuals the only point of reference you have is that title so i just wanted to ask and kind of put that into the the space there of like titles in experimental cinema and like you know what do you think about that because i think it's interesting that you have like the persian series which is like just persian one persian two and there, you kind of remove that even that uh, there's no real um, kind of background besides the Persian series. Then you have something else like a uh, dog star man or, you know, winter water baby movie. And that's, it just, I think it's interesting to think about, cause I, I never really thought about the, uh, the importance of titles and kind of experimental cinema until um, she kind of asked that question. But I, I have, that's just another thing that I want to put in the uh, air. I feel like I don't know this for a fact. I feel like you probably didn't like uh, titling things because <laughs> uh, you think about something like Dogs Are Man or Window Water Baby are, Moving. Yeah. Those are just descriptions of some of the very, images. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I do think titling things is, is hard, but it, it, it's an interesting like kind of thing. It's very, they're very basic. They're always like pretty simple. To, and then a, a lot of this stuff just isn't titled, like totally yeah, untitled. Yeah. Um, well, it's just like four like moods and, and songs. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. 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 Which is yeah. it's very interesting. Owen, do you have? I, I appreciate when Brackage puts intent into it. Anticipation of the night. That's a fun one. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a great title. <laughs> what was that, Kevin? Uh, I was asking, do you do you have an approach to to how you title stuff? Um, no. I well, it's like I I don't. It's a very kind of flowy thing where it's like I don't like a titling things <laughs> at all, and it goes through like me just like sitting on it. But I, I think with, with the one I was presenting, it was like, so I had a P, I'm working on a thing where it's, uh, I did all this painted stuff. And then I was projecting the kind of like real of just everything was painted. And I was going to digitize it and then, you know, edit it and for further push it uh, digitally. So the piece wasn't finished to me. So I really didn't, couldn't name it yet because I didn't really have the feel of it. So I think the feel of the piece and uh, further, you know, creates that name later. But yeah. I don't know. Naming's an interesting thing. But it's it's. I think it's more interesting in experimental film when it's you know you know you have a narrative feature. It it feels like the name is kind of easier to pick out. But the experimental film, when you especially sometimes with yeah yeah, yeah that, it's <laughs> like I hate it. I hate it. I mean all the no stuff naming it, naming college, anything like, like naming wanna, naming characters in a script or naming naming anything is a pain in the ass. But I think. It's it's a more interesting process when there's something that has no words or you know something like a pink right idea. yeah because you could go off of something I mean it, even yeah. like with my scripts at least like it's a lot of just me picking something that happens and I'm like okay that, that's a title um, yeah yeah no. well I mean that's the same thing with Brockage you know it's a lot sure, of just, yeah. Like, sure, yeah. yeah no it's it, I guess it's, I guess it's not all that different <laughs> it's, just, it's just an interesting process I guess yeah 
No, it's a, I mean, it's a good thing you bring up the feelings though. And say, this is going off of what Doug said before, but um, as far as like intellectualizing it goes, because I guess really that like as somebody who's never seen any of these before, just kind of watching them in the past few weeks going into this, like that was really the only response I had to these was just like how they made me feel. I was like, I can't like, I, yeah. I, I'm not gonna, I, I, like I was reading like what other people wrote. And I was like, this is really good. <laughs> this wouldn't have come out of my brain if I yeah. tried. <laughs> um, so, but, but I don't know, like the one that I thought of them, and I think probably at now having finished all the ones, at least that you guys with that was required watching. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The one that like keeps popping back up in my head, I think, is anticipation of the night as far as like what I actually felt watching them. I think that one was the one that I could project the most emotion onto. As and maybe it's like I mean you said it's a very individual experience. So maybe it's just a personal thing. But yeah. Well I always think I think Brock there's funny like on Letterboxd like brockage rankings are so funny to me. Right. <laughs> because because there's is first off there's like so many of them and but it's also i think the experiences are just so individual that i don't think you're ever going to see a brockage ranking that's the same as the other brockage ranking it almost seems right. silly to do but i think it's a uh, yeah it's, it's like all of them are going to be like probably going to be like dog star man and then a shuffle of like, all the other ones <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like here we got dog star man and then it's like 90 movies that should be <laughs> any order really uh so Dude. i think it's, I just think there's such an interesting experience individually with these kind of films. Yeah, I know. Jo I know Josh posted his ranking. Yeah, no. I know, like, last night, I, how how did you I, approach that? Well, I've been ranking his movies privately for years. Okay. You know, and then I what was it? Somebody I forget who said either like either Owen or Doug. They were like, "Oh, let's do a Brockage episode." So I like began like speed running a lot of like Brockages <laughs> last month. And, like as yeah. I was doing that, I returned to the list, and I was like, "Wanna what?" gonna make this list public last night <laughs> yeah. after the episode no, well i was i was looking at that and, and there's just uh i mean there's so many films first off but it's like just the order of everything is is such a hard i i don't like ranking the ranking things is tough anyway but i feel like ranking stuff like this is i mean a, an impossible it's feat. like almost. one through yeah. ten are set and everything else is like yeah, yeah right. I, watched it, I was like um yeah especially like you have i mean there are definitely in that Persian series. There's more. There's ones that I like more than others, but you're really pulling hairs on which ones you like more than others. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was like, I was yeah, I feel that way. Especially the Persian series, yeah, painted stuff. Yeah, I was, a lot, I was it's was like a lot of the paints. I'm like, oh, this is the coolest paints. thing ever. But ranking those things is is the feat for sure. I'll say some of that painted stuff, especially because I watched Preludes and Persian series like all together on one yeah, day, yeah. like back to back. So it was like thirty of those like three minute hand painted films in a row. Some of them get tiresome. Yeah. It's something in watching 30 bracket shorts in a row, you really come to realize what makes them great and what makes them terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's impossible to articulate, but you'll yeah. know the great ones from the bad ones. Watching yeah. 30 of them in a row. Yeah, see, I don't know if I can make that distinction because I was, I was yeah. looking, I was just watching Owen. I, I saw last night when you were going through them and I was watching you rate all of them. I mean, granted, like, all of them were positive ratings, yeah. but I was looking at how you rated them and I was like, oh, that's not, the order that I was <laughs> well I even, like, oh, even, I even when i was watching them i would occasionally like when i finished watching all of them i, I would look at like the letterbox thing and there i think it is it's just such an yeah, indi individual oh, it's such yeah. an individual experience because everyone would be like oh this is my favorite and i was like that's yeah, probably my least favorite one. Yeah. <laughs> i mean it, i think you're, i think one of your least favorites was my favorite yeah but i i do think it's just such an individual experience because you're really just looking at movement and colors and lights and the way that you kind of react to those things um yeah so I, I letterbox wasn't built for this uh, yeah no no it, it really wasn't it really wasn't especially when you, you're watching 18 of those in a row and some of them are like two minutes long one minute yeah long, you know? so it i just it, it's funny to you know log stuff like that on letterbox but i i it, it, it's interesting I, i'd like to watch i think i'd like to, to do the i'd like to edit the persian series thing and like remove the titles and have them all run through because I, I watched like it's like a you have like ten of them on one YouTube video and then you have like the next five uh, or whatever. Is, the, is it the one that Did I sent you? Guys to watch you? all of these on YouTube. Is that how you? Mo like, do um, some of them I have downloaded. Some of them I I have on YouTube. I guess. Yeah. The. I only... yeah. I'm, I I'm you got the anticipation I'm... of the night Blu-ray. <laughs> oh, oh that's crazy! Go. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to I need to set my game up a little. I got because, that. I well, I was even thinking. That. I was even thinking on the YouTube thing because just recently getting something of mine scanned and on like 180 
um, some of those stands are really rough. <laughs> like, and just, I mean, you're scanning those in the early 2000s, and now you can you got 4K scanners and stuff like that. So, I mean, some of those are really rough. But I think it's there's an interesting quality to these low scans that is quite interesting. Maybe not like the preferred version to see them, but there is like an interesting experience watching these like low resolution. Uh, you know, moving. Too. Yeah, well, yeah, I it's think, an interesting, different texture that you get there. I think the top review on at the time when I bought the Blu-ray, at least on Amazon for the Brockage Anthology uh, Criterion, yeah. is like is like um, high definition video uh, was invented just or like high definition video is justified just to see Brockage films, like yeah, or yeah. something. <laughs> like um, it, it, it's so interesting because I I was I did I really didn't. I knew they were like low resolution copies, but just getting mine back and being like more visible just because it's a higher resolution copy. I was like, oh, these are just so bad, like low res, which is quite interesting because I know, I mean, I was watching this documentary and Rocket's Rock just talking about his like distaste for video. But I think it is funny, like living in this kind of world where, you know, we we're kind of looking for these uh, scans of these films. And I, but I, it's, uh, I don't know, I think it's interesting these kind yeah. of it's a different speaking of uh scanning brockage films uh yeah a lot of them uh, aren't scans i was gonna say the art of vision <laughs> is not scan <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the ultimate grail for a lot of people yeah um uh yeah i don't know well i think it's i think it's interesting when you when he's making films right and you're making films in the you know the 80s the 90s and you're making films and then they're just films, you know, they're just on those, those cores and, you know, you're not making them to get scanned and to put publicly on, you know, YouTube or something. You're, you're just kind of making them to exist. Yeah. And it's kind of, and then it, and that, that all happens decades later where people are like wanting to get these digitized. That's, that's kind of after him almost. I mean, yeah, I guess it is, but it's an interesting kind of thing to think about yeah um, i mean cinema was like a was a was equally a, a physical art form as it was like um yeah. like like something you just watched with your eyes you know that's what that's what um also a lot of people when they try to like get like help people understand uh something like moth light it's like yeah. it's not just about like what it looks like when it's being projected it's also like what the film strip looks like when it's laid out you know like yeah. the process yeah, yeah. of how he created the film strip well, and, it, like, i mean it's fun it's such a physical experience to create something with your hands i mean i mean physical film in general is is a process that is like obviously physical but when you're you know carving into the actual celluloid or the you know the dark leader the black leader or you're painting on that it's it's such a physical experience that's just different from regular shooting on film or just reg like it just a regular film in general or you know movies it's the physical experience that that connection of you and the film um that's just completely different from anything else what do you guys think of brackages like hands like central time like titles kind of everything those rock uh the the moth light one when it like it's like doo, 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 that rocks um <laughs> uh that shit is the hardest like i don't know how he does that shit because that is the most hard like the hardest thing of any of this is those titles it's impossible i can't do that shit it's so small the fact i love those titles and i've gained so much more appreciation for those titles just doing my own stuff because that is like the trickiest stuff is carving those titles in there is very he's working on super eight for a lot of this stuff. which like, super eight believe. it's insane it's, it's, <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's, it's so small like on 16 I, I i like i don't like the titles at all that I've, I've tried on it's impossible so i can't imagine eight i can't so yeah that is some of the most impressive stuff he has is those little it's short overlooks. titles yeah, yeah. <laughs> very overlooked because i mean obviously now you know there's just titles or you know you type in two things and boom you got a title and so it, it might not uh, seem as impressive to anyone who's just not experimented to that. But it, that, is, that is, I can't imagine doing that on eight. I can't. Yep. Rockage would have hated Premiere Pro. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want to, you guys want to dive into anything specific or? You guys were just talking about Mothlight. Where did everyone, did anyone see that aside? Like where did Owen and Doug see that? Because I guess, Kevin, you just saw it this last week on YouTube uh that was the first one i watched actually i think but that was, yeah, was on, everyone's first experience with moth like that like was on youtube though. i think yeah. doug told me to watch it 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I did tell you to watch it. I I found Mothlight. I don't know how I found Mothlight. It was a really long time ago at this point. I, I, I watched it on YouTube. I don't know if I found it on YouTube or if I found it on Wikipedia or if I found it on like like Letterboxd or something. But I found Mothlight before I knew who Brockage was and before I was really like aware of um like structuralist cinema or anything like that. Um, and I watched it and I was like, this is fucking weird, dude. I was like, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I was like reading all the comments. I was like, this is crazy. I like it really affected me. And I um and I watched it like three times. So I was like, this is really cool. Um, and then, you know, uh, I found out about, you know, Dogstar Man and who all these people are. Um, but hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I watched Mothlight on YouTube and then I watched it. I, I've seen it. I've seen Mothlight the most out of his stuff because it's so short. And I think it's very, um, it's really, really interesting. Uh, and I think it's on this Criterion Blu-ray. And I think I've probably seen it there too. Um, but yeah, YouTube though. Powerful source yeah well, i think <laughs> doug showed me it like i mean probably a year ago but then i i've seen it a couple times since i saw it they showed it like the first day of you know film school they throw it up yeah. but i they, i wish i wish you we actually got to see it on, like projected because that didn't have that so it was just the youtube rip but it was pulled up bigger and it was cooler to see that you know on a bigger screen um and i think i've just grown appreciation for it over time uh, cause I, I think why I really fell in love with Brockage with those hand painted films and those, those great colors. And while Moth, I think I've grown, just, uh, the more Brockage I've seen, I've grown to like, every time I go back to Mothlight, I'm, I like it more, I think. We What's your first there, reaction to Mothlight? Um, I don't remember too much. I don't think it like blew me away. Um, I don't, it just, it's, I don't remember such a, like a, a great reaction. Uh, I yeah, but I just I remember Doug showing it to me. I'm like, you gotta watch this. <laughs> I I think that being the first one I watched was probably a really good introduction because I think when you were talking about, I mean, you mentioned before like working with your hands and like just the work that goes into it. I yeah. think I think seeing something like that and being able to like, you know read the context and understand like the work that goes into that made it a lot easier to appreciate everything that I watched afterwards. Yeah. Um, Cause maybe if I had watched this stuff, I mean, like you mentioned film school, like my, we went to two completely different film schools. <laughs> I mean, I would have never, none of my film professors would have ever played Mothlight, yeah. but I went to like very much, you know, a Hollywood film school where like they teach you film for, for the sake of getting a job in Hollywood and not so much um in that context so yeah i think i think watching that one first was was probably the best place i could have started that's the not only is that it's either so i think for almost everybody probably it's either mothlight or dogstar man is the verse they see but also for basically everybody that ever sees a brockage those are probably the only ones they ever see um yeah, I'd those imagine are two, those are the two big ones, which is it's yeah. interesting because he just has there's so many films, but it really is those two yeah. that are like the big. And I, I feel like it's probably because like those are probably um Most the only ones that are involved in any kind of curriculum at school, right? Um, mm -hmm. that they ever show. Yeah, probably. So, I was in my film classes. Okay. Damn, my school was so lame. I'm like, <laughs> I, used to, I used to think that I liked my school, and now I just like in the time between graduation and now, I'm like, damn, we kind of suck. Yeah, I wish, I wish Mothlight for people who don't know what that is. Yeah, so he he. My understanding of Mothlight is that he took a dead moth and some other things, like some other like pieces of like foliage in nature. Uh, he kind of like scattered them. Scattered. It's maybe a disrespectful word, but he like put them between two pieces <laughs> of tape, right? Um, and then he printed that tape onto celluloid, and then that's yeah, and it's short, it's super short, but it's like it's it's a cameraless film. It's all it's all just physical items that are that he printed directly onto celluloid. It's really yeah, um, it's incredibly tactile. Yeah, it's very very textures on that. Yeah, re like really interesting textures. Yeah. Um, and um, how would you describe it, Owen? I mean, that's I said what it is. Like, on yeah, a I mean, level. Um. <laughs> I I really, I mean, with Mothlight, I think, I think a lot about. I guess when I was doing some digital stuff, that I guess was like inspired by it. I think a big thing for me was you take things like trees or you know grass or something, 
and you the zoomed in kind of thing that involves movement it you you're taking something that pre-existing image and you're turning into a new image that involves you know textures and you know the kind of arrangement of that so there you turning you have these moths and these other things and they become kind of a new thing almost that is still involves the ideas that these moths and these things have and that, that is always going to be in your mind because it's called moth light you know go back to that title thing but you're you're showing new kind of images and you're creating new images with previous existing things i think i think well i think one of the first things when i first saw moth light and was trying to like read about this was uh brockage uh described it as like described the film as what he would imagine um, a moth sees from birth to death of everything that was white was black and everything that was black was white. That's a very, <laughs> I mean, it's a rocks, but that's, that's yeah. such a, <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, it is it was like a grief text. Okay. Yeah. Well, like, I'm not, I don't know. It's well, attracted to what destroys it. And then at the end, like the moth dies. And it's obviously like yeah. made from a dead moth. Like it's kind right. of a meditation on that death and grief and that cycle yeah 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 a lot of yes yeah well yeah. It's, a, it's a very fascinating piece especially like just thinking about like the point of his life that he's at where he's not really knowing where to go and this kind of just comes out of you know the creative process and i, I think the relation to these you know these moths and you know that how that they're living is is quite interesting and there's there's a lot to kind of ponder on the uh there's it's a, you know there's a very big piece for how uh short it, the runtime is yeah it's funny that that's his like most popular work i have to like knowing yeah, what art yeah. cinema is it's funny that that's the one that like every film class or like sorry kevin i guess like almost every <laughs> <class> <laughs> shows yeah well i i think it is a good example of a cameraless film mm -hmm. because you have like physical things there because i mean with the painted stuff it it's very easy to kind of get lost in the kind of uh you know massive visual flare but the yeah. the moth just the moths on the that are taped on to the the clear leader is just a very simple example of like just a film without a camera yeah and i guess it's like it's a it might be a more effective way of teaching a cameraless film like you were saying too because it's like like Painting directly on a celluloid might be a little bit more obvious than what he did to make moth light, which is like, yeah. yeah, dude, you could just you could do whatever you could do whatever you want. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I, it's a good you know you show a couple you know painted things and then you show hey there's there's so much more that can be you know achieved here. There's you know the, it's kind of an endless uh, opportunity pool of clear leader and you know objects and little things you can do to create textures and images and you know movement with the the you know twenty four frames per second. Kind of yeah situation brackage the first experimental filmmakers you guys loved for those of so, you who love experimental cinema <laughs> right, what right. We, well, so we have to <laughs> what do, what, how are we defining um experimental cinema right how are we defining love I don't know. how you know? are you defining it i don't know no one ever <laughs> well, would you say like would you say like the tree of life is an experimental film like like would you say like t a malik huge that was like an opening to definitely like semi non-narrative cinema i don't know if it's Ooh. experimental yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, well, yeah, it's the word experimental. Like, the things. word experimental is so interesting because it's like it. I think it depends. I mean, there's certain like people where it's like, yeah, these guys are just definitely experimental, but it depends on like the person because it's like you show your your mom some movie and it's like, oh, that's very experimental, and it's just like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what the example would be, <laughs> but I, yeah, I don't. It's it's quite interesting. I for Brockage, I'm not sure. I, it's like a. I feel like I'm not even so far removed from my first experiences with experimental cinema, but I feel like I've, you know, been involved in so much of it that I can't even remember like where I kind of started. It just kind of, you just kind of fall in this rabbit hole and you just kind of get swept up by the wave <laughs> of like just all of this stuff. There's just so much of it. I think he's definitely one of the first people for sure. I think uh, Michael Snow is definitely another, you know, big person involved in that. I guess my personal experience. That's a whole other episode. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> Shout out, oh. Mike. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it does. I saw a screening of his work like last week at a Cinematheque. Awesome stuff. Huh. Yeah, no, I I saw Wavelength a couple 
weeks back and just seeing yeah, that projected my, seeing that projected is like an all-time experience it's yeah, so that's crazy. my next baby and, step that's where yeah I yeah yeah <laughs> Michael Snow, Michael Snow's a good one when i drown that's another guy that they teach at film school um it's <laughs> not in my film school <laughs> i don't granted i also i, was, I don't was think we got any student, mic so. i guess i was gonna say I, I never got any mic bracket oh. Spotlight was the extent of it <laughs> oh that's a, like um there's because like no, I know really? a lot of people watch that. Yeah, well, with like, with that's like um, always the top. Uh, yeah, no, box the, review the, the, is like the, the people review, like, well, the I watched this for like, a film class and it was boring. I, there's this like, there's yeah. this like classic letter. I don't know if it was Letterbox or it was some like. It's YouTube a YouTube. Video. There's a classic YouTube video of that's a guy being like the worst movie ever, yeah, um, no, and it's, it's wavelength. But <laughs> it's, it's like, there's like they describe this day and they they go film school and there's like this day on the calendar and everyone's dreading it and it's like the wavelength day. And everyone's like really <laughs> sad to go to school because they have to watch wavelength, <laughs> and it's such a like weird, like dystopian, like uh, <laughs> found, like a like a Bruce Elder film or something. It's like it's a forty minute long oh movie with a lot yeah. of like movement. It's like well, I don't know. Yeah. It's like not the that crazy. Is, the thing is that I think uh, if we're gonna talk about film school at least, um, I think I think for me and my experience, at least like the difference between how I approach what I watch now and maybe when I, you know, was like a freshman in college or whatever um, and stuff like that. And especially I noticed with my writing is like th one of the problems I think with school compared to like doing this stuff, if you actually have an interest in it is that it just feels like work. So like when you have to watch something like that, maybe that's why they dread it so much because for me, it's been so much easier to write in like my post college life than it was when I was like required to write a certain script, like a certain way for class by like this date kind of thing. And it's was kind of similar with like stuff that I had to watch for class as well, where it's like, if you're just kind of forced to watch something and you don't seek it out yourself, then sure. you're probably not going to have a great relationship with that thing. Um, so I think that plays a role. We, I, I mean, I think there's such, there's so many things that go into kind of, we talked about, again, a personal experience of that, you know, experimental film. And I mean, I think even like I, earlier this year, you were, we were doing like the, the Hooptober challenge or just watching like horror movies right. in October. And those aren't like hard movies to watch. But when you're, you, you have your like kind of agenda, not agenda, but you have your schedule of, you know, watching things. It, you know, again, they're not hard to watch, but it does feel like a chore sometimes when you just sure, have yeah. to watch something. So, yeah. I think there's something of that. I, I also do think there's just a lot of people in film school that are not necessarily just interested in movies. A lot of sure. fucking idiots <laughs> in there, bro. A lot well, of that's big old yeah. dummies. Which it, and there's, it's like, again, it's, there's many different experiences with it. Um, but I do think it's interesting. Uh, the resp I mean, we're getting off track here talking about wavelength, but I do, think <laughs> the, I do think people's reactions to wavelength is quite interesting. Because yeah, if we want to, if we want to, move back on track i was yeah. going to suggest if we're going to continue to go film by film that we do uh window water baby moving next i feel like that's a good jump oh, if you guys want to talk so about that this is my favorite thing ever i think actually <laughs> so i would define this and this yeah. is what also because like so josh when you're like oh it's interesting how uh moth light is his most popular work it's like i agree because Mothlight's very cool, but the thing that I find most interesting about Brockage, or like I connect with emotionally about Brockage the most, I guess, is like the, his the stuff he does in camera, <laughs> um, yeah. and and like agree, like yeah. all of these images he's able to create with like photography that like just like that really create like 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 memories, and it's like it's so unique and so so specific and powerful every time, and I'm like, man. How are, like it's crazy people just aren't doing this exact thing like right now you know like yeah. um yeah. yeah like i watched window water baby moving and i was like i've never uh felt like this before <laughs> you know no i, yeah. so the, I mean, window, window water baby moving is a classic i i think the the way that he uh i guess what's the other the act of seeing one's leno's eyes we didn't have yeah. kevin watch that one but i i i think those are in a weird way an interesting companion piece of like just the body and the That's way he the board one right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and the, the way that he photographs the body I, i'm very what for him i i i know uh you doug and josh prefer those uh you know in camera things but i'm i my for me bruckage is definitely i i love the the the, the non-camera stuff but i think his camera stuff that i really enjoy and i guess 
think about the most is those the way that he photographs the body. I, I think yeah. those really emotionally yeah. connect with me. So uh, when we're talking about window water baby, I mean definitely that uh, way that I guess the kind of use of the camera there. I think it's quite interesting. The, 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 you talk about the memories and just like the way that you mean capturing your child's birth is definitely a memory for sure to hold on to. And it's it's quite funny. I the the documentary I keep mentioning they they interviewed the the child that was born and they're talking about you the know child, like, that was, why did you set it up like that? <laughs> <laughs> well yeah the, the child that is in window water baby moving that <laughs> right. uh, oh, the baby and she, child. She, yeah she's she's much <laughs> she's much older and they they talk about you know their relationship with their father and how he's you know always kind of filming them and they you know many of their fond the many of their fondest memories of kind of being the stars of their father's films and i think there's very interesting kind of emotional response that you get from these, uh, you know, otherwise home videos, but kind of turn into these experimental, you know, art pieces, really. Yeah. And like the people that don't like this stuff, they'll watch Window Water Baby moving and be like, this is a dumb home video that I just watched pretending like it was art. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah. It's crazy well, to and- imagine people thinking of this as a dumb home video. It's yeah. so, it's so. I mean, it is a home video, but it's also so interesting that like so much of that early experimental cinema was made up of home videos. Yeah. Like I was talking with my friend last night and she was saying like she just unearthed like home videos from like when she was a baby, like, you know, 20 years ago. And I was like, oh my God, that's so funny because I'd just been watching Brackage and it was like similar type of home videos. I don't know. It's just very funny to think that these people's home videos have become like high art because he did feel like his kid being burned yeah. so many people do yeah. that he well, just like so. created art out of it that's what the camera was used for i mean that's why you had a camera back then you have a camera to shoot per- like you're not gonna you're not posting on instagram or youtube like you yeah. have the camera for personal you know to keep as like a memory so i mean that's what the the camera was really used for i mean you're making you're shooting little films but a lot of that is just you know saving it for later i mean you know for you know personal family lineage i guess yeah it feels weird to dismiss that stuff too, because I get, I mean, I like uh, this one made me really emotional, but, but I get emotional just like looking at my own, um, like, like pictures and like videos from when I was like a kid. Like, it's like, sure. I don't really know how you can watch something like this and, and dismiss it in that way. Um, well, even like, yeah. And even watching the home video too, if, if you do, if you, if somebody was trying to be dismissive like that, it's like, you're also just, being dismissive of the 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 beauty that happens in and oh, yeah. and and just normal life you know yeah and not like because like that's the, that's the thing when i first saw a uh, window water baby moving that really struck me i was like this is such like like if obviously you know my relationship with them, i'm not going to say this objectively what it is but like like i felt like this was like such like an unfiltered look at like like a moment of love between two human yeah, beings totally that is now just like captured like like uh like mm-hmm. uh, like captured on film forever and i'm like this is like this is really really powerful like like i kind of like i don't know man there's like nothing really like it like as like as like intense and pure of a thing like that yeah that movie, uh, that's what made me, i mean that's what made me so emotional so i definitely agree well you you can't recreate that you, you like that that moment there will never exist again and the, the fact right. that it is you know filmed in the way that it's edited that but that pure like you can act and you can do all whatever you want to do but that moment there will never exist again and that's what you know film can be used to do is capture those moments in time um, yeah i mean so. during the film there was no baby and then well, like yeah. by the end of the film, there was a baby you can't do yeah. another take like that there's not another take like, <laughs> and now that baby is you it's know, like all right let's go back in yeah and the shots he got just from that live experience are incredible like it's yeah. like incredible on its own like just aesthetic merits as well mm-hmm. well again yeah yeah that only that moment only exists in that sort of time so you can't you you mess up the shot you you don't get that back <laughs> so the fact that he's able to capture such beautiful you know images of the body and you know the birth is quite remarkable because you know you can't you can't redo this tomorrow this is here it was i feel like too it was probably more pure in the sense that he was um he was doing out of his own curiosity and he was doing out of his own like yeah. uh like like ambition not ambition but like 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 it, it was like a home video in a way like obviously he like he like showed it to people and he like printed it but it was yeah. like you know it's a i mean it's a work of love it's, yeah it's, yeah it's, 
I mean, it's not like he's shooting someone else's birth. It's his wife's yeah. birth. It's not like, like he's just shooting some random person giving birth. It's his wife's birth and he's it's his child. It's, it's Yeah, I was just trying to think of like, you know, somebody like because somebody might like go into it and maybe are like already like kind of uncomfortable with the premise. Right. And they might and they might take out of it like, oh, this is kind of like exploitative or I'm like, it's, I don't know. I, I, I want it. I don't know. I mean, there are those that like call brackage and like all this pretentious. And to me, that's like the most like wild thing you could say about this because no. it's like literally just a dude who like films his family and like shares it with the world. Like it's the least pretentious thing, the most like authentic embrace of like who brackage was that I, I can think of. Yeah. 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 Well, it's not like he was like this like mega like superstar asshole that like sure, was, like yeah. making trillions of dollars. He's I mean, yeah, it's, he's really just making these these home videos and you know making art because that's what he thought he was meant to do. I, I, I'm, just, I'm imagining guy, like a you know? like a TikTok video yeah. where it's like a TikTok top five most pretentious like artists, and they have like like um. Alejandro um in at like number four and then they have Brockage at number three and it's like <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> oh you just made that video up <laughs> yeah I just made it up in my head right now I'm like top five most pretentious yeah. that's in his drafts <laughs> <laughs> no um uh do you want to talk about anticipation of the night because I think that's the most similar uh, yeah, to this I mean, one that's the one yeah that's the one uh that, and that, that one requires a little bit more context yeah. too um, would you like to i don't that context or does somebody no. else want to do it uh, <laughs> it was his first like major experimental work yeah i was when did that come out hold on let me see it. um <laughs> he, i want to say he was like 50 52 something yeah, like 50 that. it says 58 on letterboxd but i think oh, some of those wow. dates are i don't know if some of them because some of these on wikipedia because some of these were like filmed over a period of like several years right? or like released over a period of several years i should say right so yeah. i don't know if all the letterbox dates are completely accurate but 50s no yeah so that like predates like window window baby water <laughs> window water, maybe. Water, maybe. Yeah. yeah 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 well that's the thing when you talk about something in the 50s this, this is a amount you talk about you know 300 films this is work over you know five decades really so there's mm. there's so much about you know this whole this is the guy's life's work that's like there's just so much of it but he's just always this kind of this nature of just always working and this always creating that it, it just kind of a, a a man's life on film really in terms of talking about memories and stuff brockage um because i said like how like he mm -hmm. describes like moth light i think he described anticipation of the night by being like he he said he said it was a, a the what a baby sees throughout a day while being unable to recognize its own thoughts or something something like that yeah. um that's apt ish i think i would say um uh, i think of the brackage quote like how many colors are there to like the like untrained eye who doesn't like see green you're like in a in a in a lawn you know like how many colors does like an infant see in like that green lawn before like they know what green is yeah and I think that describes anticipation of the night really well. Yeah, that's kind of powerful. Well, I mentioned this earlier, but I mean, when this anticipation of the night and you meet the dog star man, you have, um, it's, I mean, you're looking at things like they're real things that exist. You know, they're not, yeah. you know, created images, but they are then creating new images in these real things. So you're, you're using, you know, things that exist, but you're using movement and, you know, the way that the camera is positioned and, you know, your focus up but they're creating new textures and images that you know you wouldn't kind of automatically connect them to uh certain things so you're, you when you're you're drawing or you're painting or something you're you're sometimes you you don't want to make specific shapes you're working in like lines or something you know you work in lines instead of shapes so i guess it's similar here i guess i, I connect that to using you know real it's almost backwards in that sense. It's real things turning into you know new things that aren't necessarily exist naturally, but they are natural in the, yeah. the pre-existing sense. Yeah, this one I think might be uh, that I've seen again. I think he has like two hundred and fifty films. I haven't yeah. seen <laughs> most of them, but out of the ones that I've seen, I think 
uh, anticipation of the night is the one that that uh, invokes the idea of memory the most for me, mm-hmm. where it mm-hmm. looks like um, I think I like I wrote like a little thing on Letterbox, and I think when I like, and it was like my oh, first like my just like first reaction after watching it, and I was and I think I said like um, it's like somebody beaming their own memories directly into my brain or something is like watching the movie. It's like because uh, it's like the way that he was like editing these clips um, to like kind of scatter them, but still have like it be uh, like kind of like a cohesive line of images you know it, it feels like how you recall a memory um in mm-hmm. and in and, and a way that i don't think is ever that i've ever seen replicated um exactly how he does it and it's it's so crazy it's i yeah i don't know it, like it looks like you're watching it looks like he printed his own memories directly onto the film in a way um even if that's not what he was trying to do it's like i don't know it's it's wow. crazy like this was like his first big thing and it's like i was like reading what was i reading one of his tech i was reading metaphors on vision and in that he says that like at the end of anticipation of the night i'm sure like maybe you guys know this maybe you don't it's kind of like infamous like he was supposed to kill himself right and, like yeah. film that like put that at the end and it's like wild to think that like this was supposed to be like like a quasi like suicide like note to the world like a goodbye yeah that, when it feels like uh it feels like very much like a newborn's perspective like a hello like a welcoming to the world like this was kind of his departure yeah. or at least intended to be yeah uh, is, <laughs> i mean it, it's fascinating to think about because it almost you talk about we talk about how this is like his er, very early on in his career yeah. when we talk about these decades of work and to it feels almost like a, a beginning of things where it mm-hmm. initially you know it's supposed to be an end in a way yeah. i'm trying to think like it like the specifics of how he would have done that um put him, right. put him killing himself in the I film think, i think he's supposed to like hang himself and then like shoot it and then leave instructions to put it oh, right that's, oh that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's crazy yeah that's crazy it's like a how to make a movie and i know maybe this is a little dark oh my god we can move on. <laughs> no, but, i mean it's where it's like good concept yeah, i, no, I kind of like yeah. i had that yeah i mean i i got that context right after i watched because i read that right after i watched mm-hmm. it and i that made me really emotional i mean the whole thing made me really emotional but i think um and i oh god i don't even I, it feels like the worst thing to like say while we're having this conversation but it was like i mean i said it in my letterbox review and i sound like the most annoying person ever but it was like when i when i watched it it made me think a lot about after sun because all i could do is like compare <laughs> it to like a movie that i really like like that uh is similar i guess um, and has like similar ideas as far as like memories go and obviously uh spoiler alert the ending um spoiler alert for after not this of course because no <laughs> yeah. Of the night. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah i don't know because i like i think i think it was for me more i i feel like i saw it more from that perspective than maybe what you guys are mentioning about like seeing it from a child's perspective i don't know i because like to me a lot of like yeah to me a lot of it was just like seeing that like and again i i hate to like compare it to after some but it's the easiest way for me to articulate like how i like how it made me feel um but i think the way that i saw it was like seeing him kind of like interact with this world and like that like seeing children in this world but like from the position that we know he's in because of the end of the movie um like that that is kind of what makes me emotional because that's kind of like my relationship with after sun which is like you're seeing this you know suicidal person uh and like his relationship with his daughter and you could kind of project your thoughts onto like the memories of like being a child and like maybe not having the perspective you do now on the world when you're suicidal so i think that's kind of how i watched this because it was like a lot of like him seeing these children and like kind of but like knowing that he's in the position that he's in when when you get to that ending like that's what made me emotional is like trying like trying to like connect with all of like these things around you and like seeing other people around you and like knowing that at the end it ultimately like has that result is like what yeah i don't know i think that's what makes this one my favorite um and maybe it's just because i could project that stuff onto it or because i related to another movie that i really like but 
this makes me really want to rewatch anticipation of the night because <laughs> no because like you were really yeah. approaching it from like this kind of like a uh, like this like this meta textual perspective of like like oh like where like literally where was the literal filmmaker holding the camera at and his literal life at these moments while capturing these images yeah which is not i i wasn't really considering that too much when i was watching the first time because there's a um, lot of like shadows and like you kind of like you know what i mean like i, I, I don't know the synopsis is it's a man only seen in shadow attempting yeah. to connect with the world around him. right like, yeah and synopsis. i saw th- i mean that was the synopsis that i saw before mm-hmm. watching it so maybe yeah. that's why i well, watched it from that perspective he talks about the films especially these films like anticipation and night when there's no kind of protagonist that the, the person holding the camera is the protagonist they are mm-hmm. the star of the film and this film is a reflection of them even though you don't see them necessarily like their face yeah they are the, the I... protagonist of the, the picture yeah that's how i want i mean even like the stuff like i don't know like there's like the stuff where like he's uh, like driving i don't know like you like see like all oh, the like, trees yeah like i'm like to me Gorgeous. like that's like Gorgeous. yeah that's like the stuff that i along with like all the kids and stuff like the the ferris wheel and whatnot like i was like like that stuff is like the stuff that i connected with because that's like because i read that synopsis like you said and it's like thinking about that and like trying to connect with the world in that way um just like seeing what's around you uh i don't know that's how i watched it but what was everyone's favorite sequence really quick if you don't mind the trees like i think I we just yeah, I yeah. The trees, yeah yeah well, i mean or, or the ending i love the, the garden with the baby and the rainbow for me it's mm. like uh, killer yeah i really like this whole thing i mean that one yeah (laughs) i feel like i i I feel like i i don't know i mean i liked all of these ones that you guys made me watch but this is like like a like in a separate category for me which is it's a little frustrating because this one is also pretty hard to find um (laughs) yeah you do it's not that hard you just just have to know somebody which is it's pretty easy to know somebody (laughs) when i watched it because I watched it before you guys, and I got it. I, I DM Josh on Twitter a really long time ago, and I was like, yeah. "Hey, do you know where to watch Anticipation of the Night?" Oh, yeah, but... I mean, I struggled to find it for a while, and then I asked Owen, and then Owen get, sent me it. So otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to watch. Yeah, it. no, well, that's. I mean, it's an interesting thing because it's it. This is like we talked about this podcast just being very niche. What it is, just there's not that the access isn't that great. And I mean, mm-hmm. again, we talked about like the copies on YouTube of the painted being very low quality. So it, it comes from like a it not being the most popular thing, but also the access is just not great. Yeah, yeah no, I like us. We're ta- we were talking about this podcast being niche, right? But like this anticipation of the night, we're talking to we're talking yeah, to two I, people right now, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out all my anticipation of the night heads in the chat. If you, <laughs> you anticipate the night. no i'm happy you sent me the download though because this is like the one that i would watch over and Mm -hmm. over again i think if i were going to well it's you mean you talk about after sun but it's it's a and again i keep mentioning this but it is a very personal experience and you're gonna pull from you know when you see images that uh otherwise are you know lacking in kind of context you're going to otherwise throw your own context on there and you're throw your pre-existing you know memories and meanings onto it so it, it, it does become that personal thing and i think any kind of relationship that you have with the work so it's completely valid because that's kind of your personal experience with that yeah so it's totally valid um if we were gonna I, i'm assuming we're saving dog star man for last so do we want to we can do that yeah. the whole the whole Persian series, and I mean, Persian. we don't have to get oh, yeah. into specific. Yeah, I mean, we talk about we kind of it as a whole or any. A so I so uh, here's when I was thinking about like, okay, what do we have to? What are we gonna do here? Where <laughs> right when we we first thought about this, and I was like, um, the first thing I was like, well, we should just try and like broadly cover like a lot of like the most distinct different kind of styles um uh so that without having kevin watch too many like having to watch too much stuff and i was trying to think like what is the um what's like the painted stuff we got him to watch yeah <laughs> and and i landed on there was a lot yeah of it. i landed on just like yeah just watch the persian series but like we could have like you could have done night music uh you Which know i did watch like, anyway so if you guys want to yeah. talk about that yeah uh, feel free um i, mean, I like I like night music more than all of the Persian series. You guys, like, yeah, what's your favorite painted brackage film? For me, um, it's night music. Night music. But what's the fuck? 
What's the short <laughs> one called? What's the short one called? The night music's uh, like what, like forty seconds long? Like that one's even shorter like that. Yeah, it's like yeah. yeah, it's what's like it's, one that we sent as a gif a lot. Oh, uh, <laughs> Imeth. Imeth. Imeth's my favorite. <laughs> Um, yeah. I wish Imeth was like fucking way longer. I wish Imeth was like just that but for an hour. Um, well, that's I think it's an interesting. I mean, when not, not Imeth wasn't actually on the thing, but I think the fact that it is so short and it's kind of that that feeling of wanting more and you can't have more and there's just it's so quick, which is you know, duration is such an important part of you know the medium that it yeah. being 13 seconds is such an interesting thing. And I mean, it took him forever to make, so obviously it's. If he, he might have wanted to make it, you know, longer, but, yeah. but the fact that it is so short is is quite interesting. Um, is that but, sixteen or what is that? I, I'm not sure on that. I'm one. not sure either. I think it is. I think it's sixteen. Let me see. I was gonna say I, I feel like maybe it's a different one than he used for some, but I wasn't sure. I'm if uh, oh Wikipedia be helpful here. <laughs> um, while you're looking that up, Josh, 16, 16, did you 16. did you uh, say your favorite? Oh, my favorite, probably night music. No, I'm yeah. beyond basic, yeah. <laughs> 16 Based- <millimeter>. uh, <laughs> it's like a crazy thing to, to re- relate that to. Running it's time like... of, it took about a year to produce. So that's stuff. crazy, a year. Wow. Well, that's, yeah, that stuff, it's like, I can't imagine. It's, I mean, yeah. there's so much level of detail there to spend. Because, I mean, nine seconds is, it, not, it's nothing. Like, that's a. Like ten mm-hmm. feet of film there, not even. Um, so, yeah, mm-hmm. you're. I mean, probably it's. <laughs> it's there's so much level of detail you're working on there that it's. I mean, for it to be, you know, nine, thirteen seconds, you're, you're really looking at like an immense amount of work in just yeah. that time. Well, that's why that's why I really like iMyth because it is um the most accessible. Uh, out of all of his films because it is on a it's on gift keyboards but it's um <laughs> it is uh but it's so visually dense and like like the technique is so like like he's like outlining people walking and it's like creating like these like really like like sporadic like um textures but like also like they're like um it's like animation you know and it's like it, it's fucking crazy it's like it's unlike a lot of his other stuff and i, I don't know yeah yeah quick aside is there <laughs> is there a time limit on a gif <laughs> since you brought it up uh there's a f- i think there's a file size limit on yeah it's, oh, you, okay. it, so it's gonna get to a point where like the longer the gif it's gonna be very compressed yeah um, but there are some gifs where like damn this is just very funny that, it's just very funny <laughs> that that's like how i watched it as well <laughs> like it's <laughs> funny that that's just, like the the way that we access it is through a gift well, yeah, i mean it's on youtube and, and Vimeo, yeah but I, think like... it's, I think it's funny that it is on a gift thing that's shout out that guy that uploaded that um <laughs> yeah, that guy's real um are there any i mean i don't know because even i like I don't know if you want to talk about specific ones in the Persian series, if there's any ones mm. that stand out the most to you guys, or if you want to just gloss over it as a whole. I don't, I don't know how I you mean, guys I want to approach Persian, that. I think the Persian series is a really interesting way of doing something very similar like many times, but the, there's little differences in each of them that make them, you know, Josh said there's, it's obvious like the ones that are better than the others because there's just these little differences that kind of our technique and just kind of the way that they're edited and kind of that just are you know some stand above the others but they're very similar and and you you take a take a screen cap of one of them it can look like all of them but the the way that they move (laughs) and the way that they kind of yeah uh, that's way out are completely different i I was gonna mention that the way that they move because i I mean doug also just mentioned the animation thing but it's like the way that's i mean uh, like uh specifically like the I think the second and third one, if I'm not, I'm, I'm just going off the top of my head, but yeah, I think yeah, the second yeah. and third one have like really cool, like, like where it's yeah. like zooming in and out. That's the awesome. Favorite. Um, yeah. Well, I really like, I was watching some of them last night. I really like the, there's like strips of color where it's, mm-hmm. it's not nec- it's like painted, but they're like, the lines are very strong in the way that they, uh, they look and they're, they're very like concrete kind of shapes but the color in them are very uh, similar to the other things. So they're, they're kind of more controlled bits of color that I thought were very fascinating. Um, it's Cause some of the stuff is, you know, when you're working, it's very, 
because it's again it's very small the film so a lot of it is very fluid in the way that you're you're painting so that the the lines to be very you know controlled and, and strong i thought were very interesting but the yeah, yeah i think it, the movement i mean you're talking about painted films it's a you know you're looking at a painting that has movement so the movement is a, i mean obviously a very key thing in the moving image but the so there's very different moving movements that the Persian series kind of explores that uh, I find fascinating. Yeah, I find that creation process fascinating as well. Like how you even go about well, making um, it so that it moves that way. Have you like seen like any images or work. videos of uh, him painting, um, Kevin? I have not. No. There's yeah. a great one with him and like hot chocolate. Like in a cafe. If, yeah. I, if, I, if, I, Google, if well, I Google them right now, will they just pop up? If I just like, uh, something like that, probably. I think it's really funny of what like the the pictures of him working in those cafes because I mean it shows the level of like detail because if you're not gonna do, I mean, film is very long, so you're not gonna do, you know, seconds on seconds in this cafe. You're really focusing on those little pieces. You know, I I I tend to like were referring to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But I, I looked I up mean, I looked up Brockage painting first and then it just came up with the actual film. So yeah. I was like, oh, that's not gonna work. I like I like to sometimes I, I'll have like a big tarp out and you know mm -hmm. you'll have the film kind of laid out and it's you know you do a big you kind of work in you know big pieces, but the there's some thing about the very you know detailed, you know, one frame at a time kind of thing in yeah. the in the cafe. You know, you can't lay it all out in the cafe and do kind of <laughs> these sweeping motions it's it's very detailed so i think those, those photos are very funny of him. have any of you seen the movie era era um it's like the hand-painted film that's like an hour long i don't think I no have. no definitely have not seen an hour-long painted painted film <laughs> i do i i'm always open to more painted films i i think that's like my favorite thing. let me see era area okay this is clearly not maybe i should just show it it's like this one Oh, I, yeah, I think I, I've heard of that one, maybe. I was going to say, that one's, like, super incredible for painting. Yeah. I've ever seen behind-the-scenes photos of that. Like, it's, I mean, it's, like, a 70-minute painted film. Like, it's absolutely insane, the double detail in that one. Oh, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine how long that is. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I've... We've seen him, like, the work, like, he has a work, like, a warehouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's working. It's insane. <laughs> well, because even, like, even just, like, normal films now, now that I've been working on, like, physical film, and you have, like, 400 feet, and it's, like, feels like you're dealing with the biggest thing ever but you're thinking about like a feature length film on film it's just kind of insane yeah, well, to think about in our you know we talked about in our apocalypse now episode how they did like you know it's like five million feet of film or whatever like yeah i mean <laughs> I, I can't even imagine editing on that that's that sounds like a nightmare <laughs> um, <laughs> just, uh, should we talk about, about the, the then? Then? I know yeah that's, i know that's the the hot topic What's everybody's favorite section in Dog Star Man? Uh, one of them's a lot longer than the other ones, but uh... um, oh, you mean because it's split? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah it's split into. Oh, but also, split. Kevin, did you watch it on YouTube? No, I are a friend of the pod, Hardy. Shout out, uh, <laughs> shout out, has a, Hardy. I shout think, out, Hardy. I think has a has a Blu-ray of it or something and downloaded it uh, and put it. Uh, it got me access to that, so I watched it. <laughs> okay that's that's there. good that's good i was worried you watched it on like like 480p no like, i don't is it even yeah. on youtube is it on youtube yeah no. it's on youtube this oh, is okay. like a dog star man is super accessible um, there's like, like right. three yeah. videos on youtube okay yeah um yeah, no, no it's definitely watched, worth a better watching on version than, than the youtube yeah um, um, that's a it's a weird thing with all the youtube version always seems to be like the the youtube version of wavelength is like unwatchable and it's like seems to be the version that ends up on youtube is always like the worst version possible yeah. It, it's not a great because it's like I feel like we talked about you know it's again we keep going on wavelength but watching wavelength in school is like sometimes not the best way to watch it but some people are like they watch it and they watch that like unwatchable copy and then they never right. return to experimental cinema again because they're like what the fuck was that I couldn't well, see shit so it's yeah like, it's it's when, tough when when we're talking about things that are like this niche it's probably not good for accessibility like there's not that many people that are yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. giving other people access to this stuff. No, somebody's working on a paper at school right now listening to this and being like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Prelude. Prelude is my favorite section of Dog Star Man. I was going to say Real. the same thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I like Prelude a lot. I think the the main, like, uh, part one, like, the main middle section is my favorite because that's you have a lot of the... the 
what's the word for it? Like um, like the fading images or like the super super impotion. Super, right. Bleh. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Preludes. Yeah. I don't know. Those. Two, yeah. I mean, those first two are definitely the ones that stood. That, well, the last like. So you're the, saying the, that it starts off great and kind of like ends like shit. Kind of sure, yeah. You really hit the end. <laughs> yeah. You could quote Bro, me on hate that. the yeah. baby. <laughs> bro hates babies well that's a different podcast topic I don't, i'm not a fan i'm not a fan of baby i don't like Damn. like in film they're fine like i don't but it's just oh but in like real i don't, yeah, don't want to like hold somebody's baby i just it makes me nervous like my hands are gonna get sweaty i'm gonna like drop it or something i just don't like i'm too anxious of a person to be around like babies and like if somebody asked me to hold one i'm just like please you you do it instead it's okay oh and what's your favorite section in dogs are man <laughs> i don't know if i have like a specific favorite i i feel like for me i i just feel like I don't really pay attention to when the title cards move. I, I feel like I experienced it very flow. I've seen it multiple times. There's a I mean, lot of people that experience them separately. Cause I, separate, I even like, yeah, on Letterboxd. I see people, I see people log them in like, <laughs> yeah, separately. Food and so I, I don't know. I like the kind of full experience. I mean, I love there's this like scratching on the film that I really love. I mean, the, the baby section, I think it's good. I, think, I just really love all of it. I, I watched it again recently and I, I really liked it. You know, the times I've seen it before, but, uh, returning to it again I, I really clicked for me in like the the highest of appreciations i think it's, yeah it's interesting to return to these um all of these pieces i guess and or after time you know after working on your own films and just time in general they i think they grow really greatly they're really interesting to return to i guess yeah um is would you guys be able to de to describe this one for the listeners as you did as you did with the previous ones how would you how would you sum this one up <laughs> <laughs> big big pause <laughs> well Point it's category. interesting because this one is more narrative than some of the other ones right um, there is like a person in it there is yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's someone you can see and you can and there's um, a another there's, character besides yeah. there's a, there's there's a little dog. doggy little doggy yeah. guy and there's, there's a baby yeah too. there's a yeah but it's still it's still like it's if friendly. we say that it's more narrative than a lot of the other stuff but it's also like if you yeah, if, this, you if you're going into this yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. can't sell it to people is that yeah yeah, yeah. if you're like oh let me read the screenplay to dogstar man it's like, <laughs> <laughs> um it's i don't know it's you gotta watch it it's like it's kind of like dogstar man is kind of entering um because like i i've always i always say this thing where it's like people are like oh i haven't seen like, what should I watch? And it's like, well, have you seen Citizen Kane? You know, <laughs> or, or which, uh, have you seen The Godfather? You know, it's like, oh, what should I watch? Now I'm like, I feel like Dogstar Man is kind of like up there with that, where it's like, man, what should I watch? So it's like, well, have you seen Dogstar Man? It's like, you know, you have to, these are just like movies that you got to like check out, like it yeah. sounds like reductive to be like, check off a list, but it's like, you got to, you got to watch them when you're watching movies. Like, well, I mean, right. sure. We joked about spoiling some other film earlier, but it's kind of a it's a kind of these are unspoilable films because it's a total experience that you have to kind of achieve for yourself. Yeah, so uh, much so of these are like atmosphere. It yeah, it's so much atmosphere experience. Um, on one on one, uh, you know the, I you know we talked about the the parts. I I like doing this all in one because I think it's such a, you know. They, they they work so well yeah. together. I mean, it's, it's a completed piece. I think not to so. not to circle all the way back to the beginning of the podcast, but do you is there like as far as music for this one goes? Because this is the one that I like felt I needed to listen to something while watching. Because I just I was like, this is eighty minutes long or whatever. I was like, I'm gonna sit down and and listen to something while I watch it. Um, and then when I was reading, <laughs> when I was reading uh, like this little, that little Reddit thread I mentioned to figure out what I should listen to, I, I saw like scrolled all the way down and the bottom one was, I don't remember what album it was because I didn't recognize any of the albums, but someone mentioned one and they were like, I listen to this. And, and then it, like, it felt like a horror movie and I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, is there like, um, I don't know, how does that affect your experience? I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm it could be scary. I could totally see somebody watching Dogstar Man and getting like the shit skin out of them, especially Prelude, bro. That like, <laughs> oh, right. like yeah, certain, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. like um, I think one of my friends, um, also I I feel they have to show Dogstar Man in some film schools. The way too many people that don't watch it like this have seen Dogstar Man on my letterbox. Um I mean I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure they do. I just there's like a famous oh. image that's in a lot of textbooks with like the baby's head. Okay. 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 Um, but uh, but it's like yeah, one of my friends like uh, 
re- like reviews on Letterbox. She was like, she's like a nor- I, I love her, but she's like kind of a normie. Um, and she like her review was like, like no, say, can't... say her name, say her name. Before. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so, like, drop the Letterbox to this so they can comment. You can't. <laughs> but like her review is like, you can't tell me that the prelude section isn't the movie they watch in the ring. You know. And it's like that's <laughs> so it's like there are like a, there is like a lot of people that will watch this and be like they'll, they'll be freaked out it is kind of scary especially if you're just watching it in silence by yourself in the dark it's like yeah. i don't know it could totally be scary well, yeah. well, I, I, I watched more, it i was, I was not doing more than asking. Asking. That, yeah it's terrifying yeah, yeah like i wasn't scared while watching it but i was like it's a fucking intense experience yeah. like it's like right um, i mean with silence but also with the specific if you pick a specific movie not movie like a score or sound to kind of uh play with that and you're going to have that sound image relationship that's going to totally change the way you're going to see the mm-hmm. uh, the images. So if you pick something really creepy, you're obviously going to get like a, a more scary read than someone else who's going to pick something yeah. more upbeat. Speaking of on, um, so I showed this in one of my, showed this in a class, uh, window water baby moving the copy that's on Vimeo. Somebody added like horror music to it. Oh. Um, and I'm like, this uh, pisses me off, bro. Because like, window yeah. moving. That's the thing where I'm like, yeah, it's like a beautiful, silence. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's like, one that I think, you, yeah, silence is the best for that one. Uh, but it, yeah, it, I watched that one silently. Yeah, it'd be weird to have some like weird song playing. Yeah, I there was like in the in the in the most like available copy, like like when you Google it, the like the first copy that's like a full without you know because I don't think they could put that on YouTube, but like the like the full <laughs> yeah, film like that's that. on Vimeo, um, and it's like. They, they added horror music to it and then like what yeah. the fuck it's like these are like i don't know it pissed me off um i think yeah i think there's a good argument to just watch as much as you can in silence yeah right. for sure uh, well because yeah. it's also it's like that's like or he didn't add it. yeah or protector sounds but like he didn't add right. sound for a reason you know and like there's yeah, if you want yeah. to like talk about artistic we, intent we, like we go back to you know what i was talking about earlier just him talking about you know being able to see more in that silence is there's yeah. a reason why it's not silent. I think it's really valid if you want to listen to some music for some of them. It, it might be more accessible to you in that right. way. But I think the kind of attention for most of these are but, to be listening to silence. But you guys have, I mean, you guys have seen this multiple times, I'm guessing, right? Is there like yeah. when you, to have you listened to different things? Not you, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> have you listened to to like different things while, while watching? And like, has it affected like your perspective on it when you've revisited it or is it all ways just like i don't know do you get different ideas out of watching it every time or i don't know if that's a dumb question there or... was like one time i had playboy cardi on while i'm watching boxer <laughs> and that was awesome that rocks yeah i like, may not well, rock for everybody but i think one time i had that on the background right. no i like doing stuff like that as well like i just like sometimes like i'll put more thought into it or more attention into what i'm picking but sometimes i just might be listening to whatever i wanted to listen to or was listening to that day and just kind of right be i was to, yeah i was scared to just to like vibing like just kind of vibing with it and just kind of sitting there and you know taking the images in as kind of a i like i i like um i like movies that kind of like i i think maya is a great the maya has a score but my wow, and not to, not to drop not not to drop my hair but i love the, the i love the score on the end of maya i think that move that kind of makes me move you know i love to kind of have uh you know pictures that make me want to dance so i i think uh just listening to anything you that dance for of, us on the podcast <laughs> just a little, little video watchers you know, yeah i mean that's well, on the, on the patreon you can see that uh, <laughs> but, uh i uh i i like just anything like upbeat i think will just kind of let me take the images in like a you know more fun kind of yeah. you just referenced maya now i'm thinking like what's the most how obscure can we go how much more obscure <laughs> of a film like, maya i guess maya is kind of obscure huh yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was the Grail yeah. forever, right? It only like like a oh, like, copy. I only... didn't get mad when it wasn't a Grail anymore, <laughs> but I definitely like. I remember like the first couple of days where all of a sudden it wasn't a Grail. So many people were watching it, and the score was like going down like every day. Uh, it's yeah, yeah, my bad. The score <laughs> every morning. Like, yeah. I was like, it like yeah. <laughs> It was like yeah, yeah, the lowest, I mean, yeah, the lowest score it? on my letter. Yeah, no, we don't have to talk about my score of my. Okay? <laughs> right. we, this isn't a tail end of this episode. Lowest rating <laughs> on my letterbox. That's crazy. <laughs> Dog. Oh. But I mean, you <laughs> talk about you know, it's got it exploded in people's thoughts. I saw 500 logs on letterbox. <laughs> 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 well, that's what I mean. Like the the 
yeah, Persian getting... series stuff didn't even have a didn't even have ratings after the first well, like three because that was only half. Yeah, like, I think, but I also yeah. think a lot of people that watch stuff um, like specific like even more so the Persian series and like the painted stuff than some of this other stuff is uh they're not thinking about these like movies and they're not thinking about it like I gotta sure. go log this on Letterbox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The no, bracket cool. scholars don't have their uh, Letterbox accounts ready though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, a lot of this is we talk. I mean, we talk about film school many times in this episode. But a lot of this is shown in like intellectual and you know. Uh, yeah. Know yeah. Not lame film. film school what is intellectual? Not the not intellectual. Like the uh, like academic. Ac 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 yeah. Academic was the word I was looking for. Academic um, spaces. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot and a lot of this. Like, I really want to. Um, I know that a uh, moth light is on display at like I think it's, like the American Film Institute. It's like some museum, right? That you could go and you could like go. Like they have the physical, like the original like like um film strip that he printed first on display and everything and you could like and you could screen it privately and stuff and that'd be one really of them's cool. in new york but... i don't know if it's moth yeah I mean, all, all of the know. shit's in new york all no, the shit's in new york sure. <laughs> i was yeah, like yeah. i don't know i was like remember, I, I forgot which one i was reading about but i know one of them was at a museum in new york yeah we have a friend oh, again ultimate gale ultimate grail um <laughs> our division we have a friend that fucking saw that <laughs> at new york <laughs> is recently. that Devin? Yeah, yeah Devin saw it yeah was he with like his granddaughter or something that's crazy yeah yeah Devin i mean oh <laughs> <laughs> no Devin does not have a granddaughter. my bad my bad my bad Devin is like too young for that um, um no but there, i mean we, we talked about this again but there's there's so much of this is just on it uh you're not yeah. interacting with it because it's just on the film not i mean artificial and maybe you know what maybe that's how rocket would want it I, that's not how we want it, but maybe that's how fucking <laughs> well, want it. I, I mean, I kind of alluded that earlier, but it's like it just wasn't a thing when he was making the films. I mean, yeah. And it's, I think there's a he, there's an end of this documentary that I was watching where he he kind of mentions that you know all these other all these other directors that are like his peers are growing up and none of them want to be filmmakers anymore. They always they'll move in a video. So this guy wants to paint. This guy wants to ride horses or whatever. But yeah, well, think about, about like, you know Michael like, Snow. Like, like how Michael Snow goes to like like very very digital, um, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, he, the second it becomes kind of, a little accessible. Um, he kind of mentions like he was he was kind of chosen for this kind of path, and like he doesn't want to leave the he, the film behind. You know, he's very this is very precious to him, and well, everyone else is you know finding anything else to do, but it's kind of his life is very tied to this physical film. So I mean, I don't know if he's ultimate goal would be like let's get everything accessible and digitized but it yeah. is kind let's of give another criteria on blu-ray like yeah 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 i don't know if that was his his big dream but as someone who is trying to watch some of this stuff uh it's it's difficult um for sure yeah um any any loops back to dog star man or do you guys are you guys all dog star man out <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. never dog star man that you know. we don't really talk about it that much right yeah that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> if you guys wanna it's so oh. huge but i feel like i don't have a lot to say specifically about yeah that so just because it has such a mythos of its own it's like right yeah. for me at least no. it's hard to describe owen does say like you can't spoil it but i also feel like i don't want to spoil it um it's, a little well, bit to, uh, yeah, yeah you don't want to give stuff away but it's also I, I do agree it's very these these things are very which i'm surprised i feel like we've, we've done a decent job of you know talking about it but i think these are such hard films to discuss because they're such an emotional kind of experience that's without words really yeah right. i feel like this has been going way better than i was expecting I <laughs> well <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah i mean what i like uh, you said it right but like i think i think kind of i don't know if you guys would agree but maybe the intention of doing this episode is to get people to check this sure. out um, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of people well it's tough it's like a it's a hard sell episode because i don't know yeah, how people, yeah i'm gonna listen to hour plus of brockage but i do think i hope that someone does you know take this yeah. episode as a what would we say what would we say that's, that's, is i a, mean that's is what the, one i was see? i was going to Moth ask Light you is your first if of... we want to we're going to sell brockage here if you got yeah, an hour well, and that's... 20 into the episode and you haven't seen any of his films. <laughs> no, I mean, you could have, bro, during this episode, it, you could have just like pulled up another, another tab. Like, yeah. like, just yeah, yeah. well, that's the, the I mean, they're not, yeah, you could literally. Yeah. yeah. The soundtrack. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. get sing for the people listening. <laughs> Why? We could pretend to be the moth, like wings flapping. Um, <laughs> if you just want to watch Moth Light right now. Um, no, I mean, I think we, well, it's funny because like the whole conception of this episode was like, 
we don't say this stuff on the pod ever, but like I like I am very concerned about like coming across one intelligently when we talk about movies <laughs> and also <laughs> coming across as like I, I don't want to be like really, really stupid when we get on here and do this. And I don't want to just like be like, oh, let's power rank everything. And let's <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about like yeah. top like, you know, like, oh, whatever, Barbie, blah, blah, blah. You <laughs> know what I mean? It's like I don't want to I don't want to be like like a like a like a dumb person's you know uh, uh, uh um like entertainment about cinema I, so no say that again we... about barbie though let everybody know how you feel <laughs> <laughs> um um i like that movie more than a lot of people i'll say that but um but uh i uh what were you even saying sorry um but no uh but like when we were we, we were taking we were saying like you know we like like what would something like kind of serious that we can get into like we did with like we did with m night and i think we did a good job with m night and i think like uh because like that's something that you know a lot of people either don't consider very seriously and i feel like we like we took it upon ourselves to be like we're gonna go into m night Shyamalan and we're gonna really consider this and we're gonna like act like he's a real auteur because he is and like really break this down and we're like you know it kind of became like a little bit of a joke at first when we we're like, what if we do this with Brockage? And then some of our listeners are like, you should do this very with Brockage. Interested in the idea. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. interested. And um, then, then we reached out to Josh because, uh, you know, it's a, you know, quite knowledgeable. He's <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy. Um, well, I mean, I have a Brockage tattoo. Yeah, yeah. that rocks. I my Brockage hat. Rocks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but I do mean, I think there is. I don't know a want specifically for us, but just more available information and just kind of we talk about this a lot of but the accessibility of things. There's not too many. I doubt how many. I probably can list on your hands how many Brockage podcast episodes there are in the world. So yeah, I, no, right. yeah, 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 yeah. The fact that this even exists is like a thing. Is, I think we want to, yeah, like what's like real and like cause that's what also when we're thinking about like M Night, it's like how much real like good analysis of there are from people in their twenties, right, talking about the happening and like being yeah, like yeah, the yeah. happening is a brilliant piece of post nine eleven like uh, cinema. You it's like how many people in their twenties. The Night Renaissance. I'm really, I'm really glad <laughs> that you guys have been. Yeah, that. we're pushing hard. <laughs> There's like six hours of us online. Of <laughs> There's just- so much of us, like, yeah, we, yeah we might have to just do m night stuff like it might just have to be a yearly thing the way that we're approaching uh <laughs> the francis ford coppola episodes you know we yeah. just need to what well, that's what do with the, the francis stuff i think i mean we talk about megalopolis and just him being kind of really important in terms of like he's the guy who made the godfather but he really doesn't get the amount of talk that he should sure get he's the guy that made it. one from the heart you know it's like <laughs> that is true but yeah i i think it is important to discuss filmmakers that aren't getting necessarily appreciation or even just discussion in general you know we're talking about brockage having you know 500 not i'll be talking about maya but the, uh, the films just having not that many logs or you know these things have like 2,000 views on youtube or something they're just kind of tucked away so I yeah think just and bringing them up in conversation is is one thing but having a whole episode i think is an important thing to do and, yeah and there is analysis about brockage but i don't That's think it's like the bring. kind of like yeah well, i don't think it's the kind of thing that like somebody maybe that like like w- is on spends a lot of time on TikTok, or you know, it's like <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 like yeah, yeah. Look, yeah they don't want to like, go into like read like an academic like lecture real or something. Academic like, text, and we talk about just like yeah. the film school aspect of it and finding that in school. But not everyone's going to film school. Some of these people are just you know casual or wanting to broaden their horizons. People who enjoy film, and I think it's important to kind of if you're really serious about kind of being more interested in that they think it's important to kind of hear discussions about that kind of stuff yeah i i mean i was gonna and i don't mean to put you guys on the spot if you don't have any but i have like you i i was going to bring it up if you guys have like recommend because there obviously are people listening to this episode who wanted us to do this episode so they yeah. have an interest in brockage already so if you guys do have recommendations on any supplemental reading or anything that people should be looking into for the people who do actually who are who have gotten to this point in the episode and have already watched Brockage's stuff if you guys want to recommend that stuff to them i don't know I, i'm I think again the i'm putting you guys on the spot thing, if you don't have anything to... um i think the easiest thing if like you're into already collecting stuff or like buying physical media is like i think it's really worth picking up the criterion anthology um, because it comes with like a, I don't know where I have it. It's not in my case, but it comes with like a thick, a pretty thick pamphlet with like an essay on basically every single film that's uh, in it. And it's like, there's like, I think it's like 18 hours. It's like nine or 18 hours of, of films 
uh and 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 it's like really it's like it's like a really kind of like uh cohesive starting point if you want to like really get into it I, so i really recommend getting the like criterion um and if there if there are people in the audience i mean i'm sure whoever's listening to the brackage episode already knows about all the great <laughs> like experimental film blogs out there but like yeah. i suggest like reading stuff by ultra dogma and the ultra dogma crew like michael Sik Sikski is like a really incredible influential experimental film critic like those are the type of names I would float to people looking to do more reading like day to day online. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there any other stuff you guys, I don't know where, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up soon, but if there's anything else you guys want to share as a, as a collective thing or anything you want to talk about specifically. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, no, I rocket just cool. I think it's, I think this is like interesting how, um this now we've just recorded this and this is the thing that exists uh this is, is very kind of bizarro world shit a little bit uh <laughs> um is interesting um i think that if you told me after i watched Mothlight that i would be having a long form conversation about this guy <laughs> with uh, a couple of people i might not have known at the time i would have been like interesting <laughs> uh no but this rocks dude um so obviously we're going to do a Taylor Hernandez episode and we're going to do a Bruce Elder episode Whoa. and we're going <laughs> to, we'll throw Tony Scott in there too. We'll just, yeah, we'll do a Tony we'll Scott loop, episode. We'll do a loop. That's, Tony that's Scott cool. Renaissance is coming. It's no, the coming. Tony Scott Renaissance uh, is kind of, yeah, here. it's happening. It's yeah. Here. It's happening. It's here. It's <laughs> on the tail ends. Yeah. yeah. Um, people, Tony yeah. Scott. Are you are you the biggest deja vu fan in the world right now, Josh? You think deja vu? I <laughs> oh my god, loving deja vu this year. For some reason, this like I've seen it before, but for some reason, like this year, it just really it's caught me. The deja vu bug. Yeah, deja vu to, bug. I have to rewatch that because I didn't. Really, I mean, when I was very young, my friend showed me Man on Fire, and that was one of my favorite movies Great. ever, forever. And then I rewatched it with. Devin, who we mentioned earlier this episode um and it is once again <laughs> still one of my favorite movies um so i feel like i should watch deja vu again now because that's um that's one i saw around yeah. the same time when i was younger i don't really have a great memory of it but i i like those those tony scott denzel collaborations <laughs> well i not to like completely go off topic with the tony right scott, right but I, I do think it's interesting that these the Tony Scott movies, he's watching Deja Vu and my my dad kind of walked by and he's like, wait, I think I've seen this movie before. <laughs> but it's like those movies kind of existed as like these things that, you know, people saw them, but they're like, you know, just watching these images of, you know, flashing over Denzel's face. And like, they're really impressive, like works of art that just kind of passed by as like these Denzel you know, kind of action movies. Yeah, I mean, yeah action vehicles. Yeah, yeah. Also, which I think is really they were pretty yeah. successful movies, I think, yeah. right? I mean, like, yeah. a lot of people saw Deja Vu. Uh, Deja Vu yeah. used to run on TV endlessly when I was, like, a <laughs> and this teenager. And the guy that, like, like, made Top Gun. Like, yeah. These are, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Tony Scott was, like, very influenced by Brackage. You know, like, you, can re you can really see it in Man on Fire and, like, Domino. Like, you know, he was a very... He had a very tactile sense of, like, film and then, like, moving into like more digital kind of stuff very I'm yeah. happy we got here i'm happy we got here because it's <laughs> something that i would have been upset with that we didn't mention on the podcast another obvious reason why i think it's going to talk about brockage is because a lot of the fucking um artists or like filmmakers that we talked about like specifically cite brockage as inspiration you know we did um this francis ford coppola dracula episode a while ago i think this is where the brockage thing started is um because i mentioned how uh, on the audio commentary he specifically mentions brockage uh like very like in passing um but he 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 cites him as like a as like a guy that he is um aware of and like kind of like uh colors the work in some light um and you know uh obviously like the really big example of like uh martin scorsese, martin scorsese. Uh, specifically cites for last impatient of christ that that scene um uh, it, sam brock it, 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 end, it ends on this hand uh, made film thing and i i think it's like the it's like the biggest cheer moment for me ever and I, I was watching it with like my mom, and that was the, the I like was liking the movie, but the entire movie I was waiting for this the Brockage <laughs> reference, and it's like two seconds at the end, but like it's it, you you go crazy. I, I think uh, it's really, but I think experimental cinema is very important um, in terms of this is the groundwork of why 
some narrative films are so you know impressive and stuff like that like the the narrative really can't exist without this kind of groundwork um so i think you're you'll really get a lot more about out of other other films when you kind of uh broaden horizons and turn this turn them uh turn yeah. of experimental film because you'll really understand you know the image really the image the, the, the way, image <laughs> the image in terms of the way that you know light and color and movement kind of add up to create emotion so you know you're no longer just operating on a narrative sense you're operating kind of three-dimensionally there i think i think that really is the we didn't mention it before but that kind of is the sales pitch right there as to why people yeah if, feel like if that's if a better really way to, like, because like people like these filmmakers who you i mean everybody likes those films yeah i, I mean, think no that's a good way to sell people it's, yeah, yeah. Martin Scorsese out. isn't, you know, is a big fan of Rockets. That's kind of a big, yeah. <laughs> that's a big sell there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Marty says you should check this stuff out. So, yeah, you, you should probably do that. Yeah. Sweet. Did you see, uh, Josh, did you see Coast of the Flower Moon? I did. I did. I did. I saw it like opening night or like whenever it opened with me. Okay. 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 Real. There Real. was a sequence. Oh, Kind of off topic, but we're like, I spoil clothes of the flower moon. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, at this point in the episode, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Eyes, like that sequence oh, of your death. Yeah. It was like straight out of like a weird ethical film. And I was like, in, in the theater, I like, wow. Yeah. A lot, I saw sequence, like totally worth the three and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> no, that sequence is really, I saw a couple of people um, say that they wish that there was, he did more of that with the, um, that like surrealist like uh, like her going into the afterlife like um i yeah the movie could have been more of that could have been all that yeah it could have yeah no um, there's like really like small things like that and i like the like the opening i, I really love the image with the eye and the grass oh it's, yeah it's so stunning so there's like i i like the i like the film but i, I do think there's like many places where like there's really freaking awesome stuff that's just not used enough Man. you can see a lot of shadows of the avant-garde in that one yeah 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 for sure yeah man martin scorsese rocks anyways uh, that's... <laughs> yeah do we want to do we want to wrap up there before yeah. we go completely off the rails <laughs> yeah i think so i think this is good wanna, yeah. i think our off the rails segments are some no of i i agree <laughs> i think this is i think that's some of our best <laughs> podcasting for... uh... um yeah okay let's let's wrap it up there then um obviously we're not i mean i mentioned at the beginning of the episode that uh, our recording schedule is very tight so no news today we're just gonna we're just gonna wrap it up there and i'll remind everybody again to to follow josh and they'll be all of josh's links will be in the episode description um and of course you know all the all the normal stuff like comment subscribe rate us on spotify apple podcast all that stuff follow us on twitter um and we'll see everybody next week for episode 47